Hey guys, my name is Nicholas Yeo and I'm currently a CT1 anesthesia trainee in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. And today we are going to take a quick look at propofol, which is the most commonly used IV induction agent in the field of anesthesia. Propofol's chemical structure is also known as 2,6-diisopropylphenol. As the name states, it contains a phenol group and two isopropyl groups at the carbon positions of 2 and 6 in the structure. It is also known as the milk of amnesia due to its milk-like appearance and its amnesia properties. Propofol is found in a white oil and water emulsion and the two most common preparations that you will probably be able to find in hospital is the 1% preparation which is normally used for the induction of anesthesia and also the 2% preparations which is normally used in infusions such as Tiva for anesthesia or also used in the maintenance of anesthesia in ICU patients. It is also good to take note that there are other ingredients present in propofol such as soybean oil, egg lecithin, glycerol, sodium hydroxide and triglycerides to try and stabilize the formulation. There are many uses of propofol but the most common use for propofol is the induction of anesthesia. Other uses include maintenance of anesthesia in an ICU patients or Lentiva, which stands for total intravenous anesthesia. It can also be used to sedate patients for procedures and also in status epilepticus. Now, the dosage of propofol may vary from a case-to-case -case basis. If you look at the BNF or the also known as the British National Formulary, the dosages are between 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams per kilogram whereas the Royal College of Anesthesia recommends a dose between 2 to 3 milligrams per kilogram. And in terms of maintenance of anesthesia, it's normally titrated between 4 to 12 milligrams per kilogram per hour. In terms of the mechanism of action of propofol, it acts on the GABA-A receptors, which is found mostly in the central nervous system. It basically increases the, uh, the time which the ion channel is opened and this allows for more chloride ions to enter the postsynaptic cell membrane which then hyperpolarizes this membrane and decreases neurotransmission. Now one of the reasons why propofol is favored in the induction of anesthesia is because of its rapid onset. The effects of propofol can actually be seen in what we call uh, one arm to brain circulation time, which basically means that a patient can actually experience the effects of anesthesia from the time of injection on a peripheral vein and by the time it circulates and reaches the brain. The duration of action of propofol is quite short. It would normally lasts for about three to five minutes. It can be a wee bit longer uh, depending on the dose that you give. And this is basically due to its high lipophilic profile, which allows propofol to quickly distribute out of the plasma into bodily tissues. It is also good to know that propofol is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine. Now in terms of propofol and its effect on body systems, I think it's good to have a structured approach to help you remember I normally use the systems-based top-down approach. So if we were to look at propofol starting up in the CNS, propofol can actually cross the blood-brain barrier and is also known to have cerebral protective effects due to its ability to decrease cerebral blood flow and also cerebral metabolic rate. And this in turn decreases the uh, intracranial pressure in the brain and also decreases cerebral oxygen consumption. In terms of the respiratory system, propofol causes a short period of apnea when administered as a bolus and it also suppresses the laryngeal reflexes. That is why it's a really good drug for an insertion of an LMA or an eye gel because it reduces the chance of uh, bronchospasm and also laryngospasms. It's really important to note that out of all the IV induction agents available, 
Propofol would be the most cardiovascularly unstable. Basi it basically causes a um, decrease in systemic vascular resistance and also drops the blood pressure with no evidence of reflex tachycardia. It also has a negative ionotropic effect on the heart and dampens the uh, sympathetic activity. As this is known to be a predictable response, anesthetists would normally have emergency drugs available such as metaraminol or ephedrine to basically help boost the uh, blood pressure if it drops too low. Now, GI-wise, propofol has antiemetic properties. Some of the other effects of propofol includes pain on injection, especially in really small veins. Sometimes anesthetists would co-administer propofol with lidocaine, especially if we're injected in, in a small cannula or a small blade, a small vein for a more pleasant experience for patients. One of the really interesting side effects of propofol is that it also causes greenish urine and it's more commonly in patients in ICU with long periods of propofol-based sedation. Now, one of the most important things to take note of propofol is that it can actually cause this thing called propofol infusion syndrome. And this is also one of the reasons why propofol is not licensed in children less than 16 years old. Now, propofol infusion syndrome can lead to bradycardia and eventually acicillate, and it can be defined as acute refractory bradycardia in the presence of one of the following. It could be metabolic acidosis with a base excess of more than 10, rhabdomyolysis with a CK level reaching up to over 10,000, myoglobinuria, lipemic plasma, basically lots of lipid in the plasma, or new onset of an enlarged or fatty liver. Propofol infusion syndrome is normally uh, seen after three days of propofol-based sedation, especially in ICU patients, and that is why some ICUs would regularly monitor CK levels, lactate, and triglyceride levels when propofol is used as an infusion for more than 48 hours. And the risk of uh, propofol infusion syndrome is increased in certain group of patients, especially those who are septic, suffering burns, some sort of trauma, pancreatitis, or have some sort of neurological insult. So that is all you need to know about propofol under 10 minutes. If you like what I do, please like and subscribe. And if you find this useful or if you want me to do something similar or to cover any uh, other anesthesia related content, do drop me a comment down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead. Bye bye.